thumbs up if you're ready. Uh, <laughs> Don't make her giggle. <laughs> Camp Hacker, bringing your world into focus. All right, here we go. Welcome to okay, Camp Start now. <laughs> Stop it. Welcome to Camp Code, a podcast brought to you by Camp Hacker. This podcast is dedicated to what many camp professionals believe to be the most important time at camp, no matter what you call it, staff training, orientation, or leadership training. This critical time period prepares your staff to fulfill all the promises that you make to parents and customers throughout the rest of the year. And today we have three co-hosts that I'm excited to introduce to you. So let's start off with you, Gab. Hi, my name is Gabrielle Rail, and I'm one of the camp directors at Camp Waro. Camp Waro is an all-girls camp in the Laurentian Mountains in Quebec, and I'm chatting with you from Montreal. Snowy, snowy Montreal. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Gab. How about you, Beth? I'm Beth Allison. I'm co-owner of Camp Hacker and Go Camp Pro, and I was an executive director of five children's summer camps in Muskoka, Ontario, Canada for 15 years, and now I am a camp consultant with my husband, Travis, and my big passion, of course, is leadership training. Sweet. And our special guest today on a crossover episode from Camp Hacker, <laughs> <laughs> Travis, take it away. Right on. Well, I'm I'm Travis Allison. Beth gave a good synopsis of my resume. Uh, <laughs> I'm also the director of Go Camp Pro, which I founded with Beth and uh, several other friends. And uh, I'm excited to be here on Camp Code for the first time. Yeehaw. And I'm Ruby Compton. I'm the Western North Carolina Program Director at Muddy Sneakers. We're an environmental education program uh, that takes students out into the woods and teaches them science curriculum. So we are really thrilled to have Travis on the show today. And our topic for today is essential training for a new director. So we're thinking about those new year round staff that you bring in. We've been talking this season about maybe deciding that working at camp isn't for you anymore or um, having to let go of longtime staff or say goodbye to longtime staff. And that often leaves a gap. So we wanted to talk about what to do with those new folks. And Beth is going to tell us a little bit more about why this topic is important. We thought that this just naturally followed our last podcast. Somebody's taking uh, a new place and whether they're new to the directing world or simply new to that camp, each new hire really requires that necessary training to give them the best chance for success and set you up right. So we thought this would be a good follow-up podcast. Sweet. And we're just going to jump right into it. So our question for today is what do you consider to be essential training for a new year-round director? And Travis, would you like to start us off? I would love to start us off. Um, I have lots of different elements that I've considered in this. Uh, I think that one of the things that I found most useful when I was first getting started, it was a skill that I used over and over again in my training. And I'm not sure how I found the course, but I'm so grateful that I did. I took a course in my first year directing called Nonviolent Crisis Intervention. And it was it, it, something I say I, I used many times. I used it when there was um, kids that I could see were getting riled up and, and were potentially heading into some sort of violent explosion. Um, and so, you know, we learned lots of de-escalation techniques, how to talk to them, how to, you know, when to sort of roll with this thing, but move everybody towards safety. I have had to only twice um, use the physical restraint that I learned in there. Um, but it was something that I knew um, in that situation. It was a skill that I'd practiced and I had this. And I also knew that because of my training in this situation where I worried, one was I worried for another, for, for other children around this child. Another one was I was worried about this child that I had to physically restrain them to get them to calm down. And um, this training gave me the skills that I knew that I wouldn't get in trouble because I'd followed my training um, in the situation. And I knew that the child wasn't being hurt by what I was doing. And it was just enough to get me through it was probably 10 seconds each time, um, just enough to deescalate a situation that could have been really bad in many ways. And so it was um, just a really interesting skill and, and I, I loved it. I really enjoyed the course. It was three days long and um, it was just some taught by some really smart people. So if you could find that course, I, I think it'd be a really good one to store away. I bet you don't use it more than once every five years, but when you do use it, it's, it's nice that, to have that skill. Sweet, really smart. 
How about you, Beth? Well, I think one of the most obvious answers to this question is to attend any and all conferences that your camp can afford for you to go. So your local ones, your agency ones, provincial ones, state ones, national ones, whatever you can get to. And while you're there, try to meet as many different camp people as possible and ask questions. Camp directors are always willing to share and they love to talk about that one great thing that sets their camp apart or their one new program that they're really proud of. And just write down all the ones that really speak to you. If you can't afford to go to conferences though, maybe you can contact other camp directors in your local geographical area, you know, set up a coffee house or a wine party or, you know, meet at a pub or something um, and just really learn from them, get them talking about what they're passionate about and I think you can learn a whole lot. Um, the other thing I think I would do is also try to talk to as many former staff uh, as you can um, in all of their program areas. So learn about all the program areas that your camp offers by talking to the former waterfront or the former arts and crafts or the former um, adventure program programming person. Uh, I think it's a good way to sort of ingratiate yourself and to get to know people, but it also um, really helps you to, to learn about all the programs from the people who were really passionate about it in the first place. So I'd start there. Sweet. Can I jump in on that? Yeah, please. That, that reminds me of an idea, and it's, it's <laughs> probably best known as being a Disney idea, but um, I know GEM does this and, and other big organizations where... Um, everybody on every team is responsible. And I think at Disney, executives do one day a month in a different role than their own role. And it it's, gives you a hands-on. So it's a matter of making yourself get out of the office and and see those things. And you have the perspective of, you know, the person who cleans cabins after the, the, the things are done. Or you have the, the perspective of uh, someone who gets up at 5.30 to start the baking and... Um, it's good as a camp director to know all of the, the real bones that hold the camp together. Absolutely, especially if you grew up at that camp. Mm -hmm. You think that you may know everything that goes on because you've been there for the last 10 years, but if you haven't run particular areas, it's a really important um, thing to get together with these people and find out what makes them tick and why they're so passionate about it and all the little um, bits and pieces that go together to make camp work. But I also think it also lets you get to know those people and them to know you and to understand that as a director you really care about what they think and what they feel. So it's kind of a double bonus there. Awesome. Yeah, and I would tack on to that one of the, the ideas I was going to put in there today I think carries over brilliantly is um, just understanding and asking those staff what are the must do's like what are the traditions that you shouldn't touch what are the um the values that are really um solid to the organization and central to the organization uh, if you don't know what to ask some of those people that can be a good place to start so i think that's really important how about you gab um yeah i think i think uh, if it's a new person coming into your organization it, it's it sometimes can feel a little bit like maybe a step parent coming into a family and you 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 know sometimes it's met with a little bit of resistance like you know you're not the boss of me you're not my dad <laughs> um <laughs> and that anybody that's a step parent understands the uh <laughs> you know there's there's like a long process um to sort of you know dissolve a little bit any of the misconceptions that you're there to change or take over or um that you're really there to to be loving and supportive. And, and so I find one of the ways um, to do that, which is, again, it's building on what we were just saying, but um, is sitting down with a group of staff members and as many staff members as possible and getting them to tell their stories and what makes camp, you know, camp to them, what makes camp X, camp X to them. And then the homework on the new camp director, new full-time staff members is just paraphrasing saying, so I understand that this means this to you and I understand that this is the essence of this camp and there and and that's a very important part of anybody that's taking on these roles is that not one camp is the same we we all serve children and we serve a, a community but there is a there's an individuality to those organizations and um, to gain trust um, it's it's sort of the first piece that is needed is that that community feels cared for and to feel cared for you need to be heard um, and that they and that they feel like you get it, um, you know. And then from there, uh, new directors to do a good job need need 
uh, confidence. Um, so hopefully the person that's been hired has the skills, has, has um, the knowledge on, to, on how to do the job. Um, but there's really, as, as we mentioned, there's really the nitty gritty things that need to get done on a daily basis. So routines are really important to be introduced to a, to a new person. And, and throughout the year, routine is constantly shifting within a, in the camp organization. So anything from helping them to connect to their full-time staff members, whether that might be just two or three other people in the off season, and then during the summer, it might be you know, up to how many people. But what does that look like? How do you, know, how do you sign off on your emails? Um, oh, this person really responds this way. So we bend to the will of our staff. It's just to say that we're caring for the people that we're working with um, and just bring them in a little bit on the water cooler talk and how, you know, how do we connect and how can we create those type of connections? I, I feel are really important. If I can just add on to the part that Gab said at the beginning, um, just before we move on, is not just sitting down with staff or, um, you know, seasonal staff, but also trying to get around to uh, having conversations one-on-one -on -one with board members, if you've got them, owners, if, if that's your situation, major donors, um, locals, people who live in and around your camp, suppliers, um, those parents who have been lifers, who are really supportive of camp, really having an opportunity to learn why they're involved and what's important to them, any little idiosyncrasies they may have, um, is I think is a really key piece to feeling comfortable in your new job. And I, I would add on to, in addition to having all those conversations, I think one of the really valuable things that I've been able to do uh, in my last two jobs and coming into a, a new job in August um, is not only talking to people, but also having a lot of time to just look at files and mm. <laughs> go through the filing cabinet and see what's there and kind of put my hand on everything um, and really understand, make sure you're training your new director on your digital storage, whatever it's a server or Dropbox or Google Drive and understanding what goes where, but also giving them time to look through some old stuff so they don't ever feel like they have to reinvent the wheel um, and they know where to look for things um, that, you know, templates or whatever that they might be seeking, but there's also a lot of history that's there too. And I think sometimes things that are forgotten uh, can be rediscovered at that time. Um, I had a drawer in my office at camp that I always forgot about. And I'd be like, oh, where's that thing? It must be in that drawer that I never look in. <laughs> you know, it was almost <laughs> always there. So uh, there's an amazing amount of history that's probably tucked away in filing cabinets. So set aside a day or two for your director to be able to go through and look through that stuff and then have some time to say, hey, I saw this. What's that about? Or I have questions about this. Or can you tell me more about this? And that may be helpful going into some of those conversations as well to have had that time. Cool. Uh, well, let's move on to our next tip. Travis. Well, um, for your listeners and the people watching us on YouTube, this might be a bit redundant, but let's just make sure we cover all the ground. I think that if you want to have a view on a daily view on how other camps do things and get ideas and inspiration, then you need to be a member of the Summer Camp Professionals group on Facebook. Um, if you want to feel that there is now more than 9,000 people who will be resources to you. Uh, and if you're listening or watching this, you're looking at some of the first dozen people um, who are on this on the page. But now there's 9,000 people there and um, they're a great resource. They're really open to sharing ideas. People are answering all your questions quickly because there's so many bodies now. You could post a question and have 10 answers in 15 minutes. And so if I was um, a camp owner who hired a director, I would assign them probably one thing a week. It'd be like, find me all the best ideas for um, anti-bullying training and report back to me in a week. And then the next time it'd be like, find me the best ideas about marketing through camp fairs and report back to me in a week. And I would just make them work through all the different aspects of, of their job. And then I would know at the end of, who knows, 12 weeks maybe, they would have a, a booklet or a, a file on their computer that was full of the top five ideas of, of all of these things. Um, and so I think that that's a, a great resource. It's kind of a pain because it's so big, not just because <laughs> of the people, but just because it's been so many years now and the search isn't perfect and, and you do all that, but 
I mean, if you looked at camp databases, you could be reading stuff about camp databases until the day you retire. <laughs> um, and so there's just just gobs of information on really every topic in camping. And then every once in a while, I'm still surprised by the topics that people bring up. You're like, oh, yeah, I can't believe we haven't talked about that before. So I would definitely go to that. So if you want to, you want the easy way to find that if you're not... Um, you can search for Summer Camp Professionals on the Facebook app on your phone. You can go to um, c4mp.pro. So you write that it looks like camp. It's C4, the numeral 4, mp.pro, and that'll take you right to um, the Summer Camp Professionals group. Right on. How about you, Beth? I think just to go back to a bit of the stuff about learning about your new camp, Mm -hmm. Very quickly, if there are certain things uh, that you have trainings for uh, that you require them, like adventure programming certifications or waterfront or tripping or first aid, those kinds of things I think would be really crucial to have at least one member of your leadership team certified in each of those areas. If you are not the person who has all of that certification, that's okay. But I think uh, as a director, you really need to understand what's involved in all of that. So trying to get that would be really important. Sometimes those can be really expensive, so camps need to sort of spread them out over a few years. But uh, having that in your arsenal, I think, would be really key. And the other thing I think is necessary for a new camp director, especially if they're coming to a new place, is to get yourself set up with the camp's dictionary. So we all have lingo that is specific only to our own camps. A lot of us share the same kind of lingo, but there are words that are very specific to just your camp. And if the camp has it all written out, that's great. Get a copy and start learning it. We did it one year and put it on the back of our staff shirts. Um, but I'm sure we'd need three or four shirts now uh, since we left for all the additional lingo. Or you could start um, an online project for alumni and campers and parents to add to that dictionary, like your own Wikipedia page. Um, and as Gab said, ask for the meaning and the stories behind that so that you can understand what's really essential to your camp. And I think this helps you to understand the value of things, but it also gives you a lot of background knowledge for moving forward. If there are things that you think you might like to change, um, it helps you to understand why they are how they are and maybe things that are um, not so great, but are traditions just because they've always been that way, you can start to move through as, uh, as you begin to direct. But I think having that dictionary would be really important before you get started. And one thing that happened when at the camp that we used to direct after we left, and it's one of the things that I that I love that they did after us. It's probably just because the technology changed, but um, there is a staff wiki, and so any questions that come up, you just put it into the wiki, and the the staff answers them, and those answers are recorded. So the depth of knowledge um, just grows every year, and it's more than um, you know who. It's just more than the policies of what to do if someone discloses abuse to you. It's some of the little things like, um, you know, uh, graces we sing at meals or how do I do laundry? Some of those smaller things that, that kind of fall through the cracks of staff training. And um, that would be something really interesting, I think, to get started at a, at a new camp and just gather the generations of knowledge and be a way to facilitate some of the stuff that Beth was talking about and, and keep all that in a place that, um, you know, that, that other people can have access to. Oh, so smart. I, I started working on one of those at Green River and never got it off the ground. So life goal. <laughs> New job. That'd be so smart. Uh, awesome. How about you, Gab? What you got? Well, speaking of goals, I would say definitely set expectations. See my segue, Ruby? You see it? That oh, was very good. <laughs> Especially when you're in charge of an org, you're hired to be in charge of an organization, um, the pressure that's put on yourself can be, can be immense. And that's when big mistakes can happen because you don't ask for help. So setting up the clear expectations, um, if you're a board member that's hiring a new director, making sure letting them know that the first three months, this is what we're expecting from you. Um, you'll be shadowing. Um, we want you to be answering emails, but sending before you send any emails out, you'll be sending it to this person so we can help guide you with the tone of the emails, et cetera, et cetera. The next three months, this is what this will look like, you know, so on and so forth. And I think, I think by doing that, again, going back to the confidence piece, it allows them to know 
okay, so as long as I aim for this bar, I'm doing all right. Um, and and I, as the captain of the ship, I don't need to know how to navigate, you know, hoist the sails, you know, mop. I don't need to know all of this. Uh, I love metaphors, obviously. So, um, so that that would be that's a that's a very very important piece. And also saying, you know, from if you know from the person that's hired um, a new a new individual into the team, state some of the the norms that happen when you're learning a role and what you've observed. So that they feel like their roller coaster of of uh, of uh, different experiences are are normal, um, and then if possible, really important is to plan for time. Um, I I know that sometimes we don't we can't plan for when a new person comes comes into the role, but if you can foresee it um, and do that early enough to to make sure that there's somebody that can literally sit beside the person and go through the motions. Um, that's going to be in the long run, one of the, the biggest, uh, training tools, uh, for that new individual and it'll also show them that, that you care. If you can't do that, then explain why that, why that was the, 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 the situation, but how you're going to try to support them, um, in the first, at least couple of months of their job. Yeah, and I think going along with that, making sure there's a, a desk space set up for them. That was something I always tried to do when my interns were coming in for the summer. They might be coming in in March or April and using some of the workspace that's just been storage all off season. And so be, making a conscious effort to make that look like a workspace when they come in rather than just, oh, right, uh, let me clear off this space. Yeah, you're going to sit here. You know, that's, that's not very welcoming. Um, yeah, I I want to tag on to that that I think one of the most valuable pieces of training that I haven't necessarily been given along the way, but I've steered myself towards and wish I'd been told, like, go do this, seriously, go do this, is um, a combination of just, like, office trainings. So, like, how, A, how to be a manager. That's one piece. A manager, HR, learning all the employment forms and not just, oh, we just always fill these out, but this is why these are filled out. And these are the mm-hmm. legal implications if these aren't filled out properly properly. Um, or if you just sign here, but you haven't actually, you know, verified the things you need to verify. I think that's all really, really important. So whether it's at a community college or some of the kind of professional speaking organizations, definitely check into that and get folks signed up for that stuff before they're managing people. Um, and also, um, just how to have a productive office life. I think that that's not easy for someone who hasn't ever worked in an office. And it's not uncommon for us as camp directors to be pulling people into our year-round positions that maybe were really great program staff and college students or have worked some other seasonal or teaching jobs, but we're pulling them off the front line and now putting them in an office, and that's a really different workflow. Um, So there's some great books that are out there. Right now I'm working my way through The Productivity Project by Chris Bailey, and it's phenomenal as far as how to really get work done. I think the easiest thing to do, and I've seen many people make this mistake, uh, when you start an office job is to just get sucked into email and all you do is answer email <laughs> all the time. <laughs> so even just providing some tips on email management and again, talking about expectations for, you know, how quickly will email be re- responded to, um, you know, are you expected to have inbox zero at the end of every day? You know, how, how does that supposed to look? So providing some tips and tricks that you've found that work uh, and helping that staff member set themselves up for success. And even if that doesn't mean kind of holding their hand those first couple of days, I think that that's important. Um, checking in and then from there kind of loosening the reins versus just like, here you go. Uh, now, obviously, if you have somebody coming into that role who has worked in an office before, has done some kind of management or um or even just that, again, that office workflow of answering emails and, and taking phone calls and dealing with projects and people coming in and interrupting them. I still I still think providing them with some of that hand-holding as you start off and, sh- and showing them this is how we do it here is really important. Cool. All right. Let's go around one more time. One more time. What's that new director training that you think we can't do without? Travis, do you have one more for us? I have two more, so you can come back around or I can do two depending on how you prefer. But I would say that I would I would be a failure in my job as a director of GoCamp Pro if I didn't put up my (laughs) hand and say that this is exactly why we designed GoCamp Pro is just for this person. People who've been a director for less than five years. Um, you know, we have stuff on as many we've real really six themes to the the different resources in GoCamp Pro. Uh, there's staffing. 
that includes hiring and training. <laughs> Excuse me. There's program, there's marketing, there's the facilities, there's youth development, and finally, there's the business of camp. Uh, and each one of those has a, a varying numbers of resources, but with all of the founders and all of the production partners that we have, we have all of those resources available to you as a member. So um, totally self-serving to do that, but I think that the, the product is there and I think it's helpful. And at $300 a year, it's a lot less than the cost of going to one conference. And it's a it's the best kind of conference. It's all of those good conversations from the hallways that Beth was talking about. Um, and it's year round. So uh, my, my vote is go camp pro and you can just for, for camp code listeners. Uh, <laughs> if you go, you can sign up for um, a week for free and see everything. You get access to the whole thing for one week for free to decide whether or not it's worth it to you. So very little downside to that. And that's at uh, gocamp.pro. Sweet. What's I your love up? that. Yeah. Yeah. And your second one? Yeah. And your second oh, tip. Yeah, my second tip. This is... Um, Let's go Camp Pro. It's <laughs> <not again. laughs> no, but really. I would, I would highly recommend this thing called Go Camp Pro. Um, <laughs> well, let me drop a mini tip in there. Uh, you, at some point, are going to be responsible for thinking about marketing communications. Check out the library, the resources. I forget what it's called. The Learning Center, I think, at wistia.com. W-I-S-T-I-A. Um, they have good stuff about making videos. Uh, but the one thing that I really wanted to leave people with was a, a course that I did this year and then I became a coach in, and it's Seth Godin's Alt-MBA, and it's a one-month course that is definitely an intensive. It's a, a thing you do in the fall, um, and it's uh, it gives you insight into all different aspects of business. It's right the right questions to ask about how your business is running. It's the right questions to ask about how... Um, how to improve your marketing, how to improve your communications it really gives you a base in all the things I think that you would need as a, as a camp management professional. And uh, I'd highly recommend it. It's definitely an investment. It's an investment of time and it's an investment of money, but, um, but they do have, they do offer spots for nonprofits. So if you're in a nonprofit camp, you can get in for cheaper, but, um, you will have so much more confidence for this job if you take this course. And it's a great, you will work with great people and it's really project-based. So it's not sitting and watching a lecture on a computer or camera like this. Instead, it's um, doing projects with people who are brilliant, doing amazing things all on their own. And uh, the true value is the confidence that you will take into the next years of camp from that because you will have so many more skills that um, will make you feel like you did get an MBA um, for just four and a half weeks of worth of work. So I, I think it's the, the, the strongest recommendation I can give you after Go Camp Pro. It's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> cool. Well, Beth, what else do you have to, to offer today? I think I would get some training from people are in and around my neighborhood as a camp director. So either through my local children's aid society or a social worker and have uh, whatever kinds of training they offer so that everybody is emotionally, physically, socially safe at camp, your staff, um, your campers, your parents, you yourself, obviously, um, maybe something your local health inspector can help you with getting food uh, handling training, the food service industry, learning all about your camp kitchen. If you've got one, that's in a really important thing to know if you uh, have residential camp and you're offering meals every day. Um, and the health department is always really excited when people get proactive about that and don't just have the panic faces when you sh when they show up unexpectedly. Um, so I would go there. Maybe your local fire department can offer some training to you. Um, those kinds of things I think would be really helpful to just feel like you're more in control and to know that you're taking the best care of your people. And I think my last tip would be to do as much reading or looking at TED Talks, those kinds of things that you can. Um, I'd suggest, of course, books from Michael Branwine. Um, Heidi Arizala, Scott's sister, has a great book out um, for self-esteem in teenage girls. I would look there, and, I, and there is an interview about that. It's one of our podcasts. Um, adventure programming books from like Jim Kane and guru, gurus like that. Um, and, of course, there is the Camp Code podcast because we're in season four. So if you're just getting to know us, there are three seasons ahead of this. 
And I think a lot of that could be really essential training for you before you lead your first leadership training. Right on. Gab. Um, I would say as a, as part of the training, um, you hired this person for a reason. And so, um, provide them with opportunities to let them shine, um, in, uh, in why you hired them. And, and that does take support and you do need to create space because it's a new person and whatever they're bringing hopefully is unique to your organization. Um, so if that staff training, don't wait till the summer, get them to host some staff training from the beginning. If that has to do with marketing, you know, let them do a couple of things as soon as possible. Um, and that again, will start building trust, uh, with, uh, the new community that they're uh, joining and it will build confidence for them, but you know, let them shine, you know, give them, give them that opportunity. Sweet. Yeah, and uh, to follow up on that, I would encourage you to not look at your training of your new director as something that happens in a couple of days and then you're done, um, that it's something that's going to continue on throughout probably the first, you know, the whole time that they're working there, really. But, you know, the first year, it's pretty intensive. And I would say, you know, kind of, I don't know, whatever proportionate relationship here uh, of, you know, you should be checking in with that person probably once a day that first week they're there. Um, every week after that, uh, then maybe once a month. But just make sure you're really checking in and seeing how things are going because I think it's easy for um, for new employees to feel like, well, I don't want to bother them with this question. I've already asked a lot of questions. And so creating that space as the person who's training them to say, hey, what questions do you have? Where do you need help? Um, what's on your mind? Um, really checking in with them, I think is important. And the other thing that I would really, really strongly encourage goes along with a lot of this um, promotion we've been given today, but make sure you encourage your new directors to become a visitor with their organization, mm -hmm. whether it's ACA or ACA, whatever is the closest camp organization, um, get them involved with that because it's such an educational process. And even if you, your camp is not accredited, you can learn so much and it's such a cool way for directors to get out and see other camps in operation um, and to see things that you're like, oh, that's brilliant. We're taking that or, oh, I will never leave here because that looks like a terror, <laughs> you know, so <laughs> and both can happen on visits. So really, really encourage that. And it was something that I was told when I first started working in camp was, oh, yeah, once you're a camp director, you become a visitor. Um, and I'm so glad that that was the background that I had and would encourage that to every person ever that I train um, in a role like that. Cool. Well, I think it's time, Gab. Recap it for us. What's happened today? All right. I've categorized it into two <laughs> groups. Uh, one, resources, and then other cool stuff that we've said. I'll start with cool stuff that we've said. Um, try to do... Uh, try to create a safe space and a welcoming space for your new director by, one, introducing them to other camp pros, making sure that they have access to all the files, have a shadow beside them, introduce them um, in, in different ideas, such as the Disney idea of trying new roles, uh, invite camp uh, people from that organization to tell their stories and have them paraphrase it. Also get them connected to the entire camp community, parents, campers, and, and locals. Uh, on our resource size side, we have Go Camp Pro, um, Seth Godin, Camp Code, Michael Brandwine, training for safety. I want to emphasize that. I think that's super important and make sure that they can be a safe director that summer. Um, as well as, we didn't mention it, but uh, ICDC, which is the International Camp Director's Course, which is a five-day course. It's pretty darn cool. And uh, that is it for our recap today. Ruby, yeah, you're on mute. You're on mute. <laughs> a rusty day. All Just right. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, we want to make sure you know how to be in touch with us. So, Gab, tell us how folks can be in touch with you if they want to find you. Um, they can check out where I work at waro.com, O-U-A-R-E-A-U. -E and they can also follow me on Twitter or Instagram at Gabrielle Rail, Rail with two L's. Awesome. Going up to our Woodstock crew, Beth. You can find us both at camphacker.tv or gocamp.pro. And you can email me directly at beth at camphacker.tv. Awesome. And uh, I am Travis at gocamp.pro. And uh, on Instagram and Twitter and all the social things as at camphacker. And thank you for having me on. Yeah, thanks for being here. 
It was and, fun. <laughs> and if you want to be in touch with me, you can email me, rubylynn85 at gmail.com. You can check out where I work, www.muddysneakers.org. Uh, or you can find me on Twitter, rubylynn85. And uh, we want to make sure that you all know how to get involved with us. So you can join us on the, using that hashtag camp code and tell us what topics you'd like for us to discuss, any guests that you'd recommend that we talk to, any great leadership training tips that you want to share. Uh, we love hearing from you all, our listeners, because this industry is all about sharing. And that's one of the things that makes it so great. Uh, Also, if you found this podcast to be useful, if you can help us out and leave a rating or review for us on iTunes, uh, you can do that using camphacker.tv slash cc underscore iTunes, or tweet your love of the show by going to camphacker.tv slash campcodelove. All your feedback really helps keep the show going. And I want to give a shout out to CA Camper, uh, who left us a review on iTunes. So we really appreciate it. And we hope to see more soon. And Beth is going to tell us what we're going to be talking about in our next podcast. Mm -hmm. We are going to share with you 12 new ideas for staff training. Woohoo! Right to the core of what we do. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Awesome. Well, our final segment on each podcast is a best practice for leadership training. And we'd love to hear some of your most memorable moments uh, and most effective tips. So again, you can tell us those using that hashtag camp code. And today, Beth has our best practice. Or Beth practice, either one. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Setting yourself up as a new camp director with people to support you, for me, is one of the most important things that you can do for yourself. So I would advise that you create your own small support community. Nothing official, but just three people who will be there for you. So one should be someone who's going to be willing to listen to you complain, who will bring you treats uh, or drink wine with you, Their job is to give you hugs and tell you everything's going to be okay. And we all know somebody who's really great at that. Another one should be somebody who's really objective and who will tell it to you like it is. So it's often really hard to find this in the same person. So I would choose somebody whose intelligence you really respect and who you know has your best interests at heart, but who will give it to you straight. And the third person I would recommend is somebody who's already in the camping world that you can choose as your mentor, somebody who's experienced, who has gone through much of what you are about to go through and who can be there to guide you or answer questions or challenge you and affirm you. And I think you need to be really upfront with these people, tell them exactly what it is you're hoping they can do for you and ask if they're able to fulfill these roles for you Um, and be okay if they say no. But as I said before, choose wisely. So I would meet or touch base with these people at least once a month. Be honest with them, listen, um, and give them permission to care for you and your role in this endeavor. Um, When our job as camp directors is to care for people, we have to make sure that somebody's caring for us. So I would set that up at the beginning just so you've got that committee of people who will take care of you. I love it. So smart. Well, thanks so much for listening today and please join us using the hashtag camp code.